the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works <coughs> study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth one more day being renewed in the grace of our lord assuming that everyone has been rebounded by using in the privacy of his priesthood 1 john 1:9 which has to get for you to know that we are dealing with the true great living jealous almighty holy one god in whom sight walks only uprightness and integrity who respects and values only the reflection of true righteousness concerned by the holiness of the truth and if we any longer prolong to stay in the sin and try to worship that great lord it is a vain attempt to please that great lord to that great lord the only thing that mandates is absolute holiness at lord god the holy spirit cannot use us to worship him in the filling of the holy spirit until and unless we confess and cleanse out our sins first 1 john 1:9 is not a license to sin it is a license to remind us again and again that when we have taken a self judgment for the sin that we have been made either by thought word or deed through his word and to know that we have been learning of Christ who loves only truth who cherishes in his word that has to be honored above his name we also need to walk not as the religion walks but christianity in true relationship with jehovah through his lord and savior through his son our lord and savior jesus christ but in today's christendom repentance has been taught not in accord with the true word of the lord at the same time this man are trying to walk <coughs> considering christianity as a religion and they are considering it not as a relationship and that is what we are not able to understand until unless a man comes up to look upon the mirror of the word and to look upon the true holiness of jehovah until unless he consider a thorough search the darash what we can note in jeremiah 10:21 they have failed to sort after me they have failed to use their intelligence so that they could know what i am that is what exactly it has been today not done in the pulpits the pastors have become brutish dull no reason at all they have don't have any ability to reason and they have failed to search diligently to make a thorough inquiry to, to, to seek him so that as with an utmost care even probes 817 quotes to us very clearly those who search me diligently those who search and make a first step in careful attention towards me will not only find the wisdom but also they will find the great riches of this world dear brethren we need to know riches of the world i intend to say the spiritual one as well as the material one which lord god the father has done in the case of king solomon even he does in the case of us when we are thoroughly walking with the true integrity of the search of wisdom of jehovah only when we are having the true fear of the lord the problem is that we are not able to understand what is the fear of the spirit what is the trembling of lord god the holy one where with we should stand the trembling of lord god the holy one when you can always note the seven lamps stand the seven spirits which could be told for us in isaiah 11 to 12 it is not the seven different types of spirits but one spirit manifesting in the seven types of the one where with you can note the last two pair again the two pair again the two pair and the one pair and we can understand this very easily 
as we can note, the last two things could be told for the spirit of the fear and of the knowledge. Until and unless you take up a thorough step to look and to understand the spirit of the fear and of the knowledge, there will be no entrance for you to take the counsel and might from Jehovah. And as long as you fail to take the counsel and might from Jehovah, you will not understand what is the wisdom and what is the intelligence which our Lord demands from us. This wisdom and intelligence in return, having the spirit of the Lord should be manifested as we walk. But we are not able to understand first the fear of the Lord, the tremble of his word. Even Isaiah 8.13 quotes to us very clearly, we need to understand to the point, sanctify the name of the Lord God of hosts alone. For he alone is our fear, for he alone is our tremble. And as you do it, the holiness of the Lord will be among you. But what have we done? We have absolutely spoiled out. We cut the cords of the net. We cut even the curtains into stretching apart into pieces. But there is no one who can take it to their heart and understand what it is they have done to the temple of the Lord in Jeremiah 10.20. The pastors whose work is to primarily feed. And we have a great lesson to be noted even from Acts chapter 4 verse 2, which tells to us very clearly a great lesson, a great important point, a very great real understanding of the truth very clearly it tells to us being grieved they went around to preach they went around to teach about this great Lord and his resurrection being grieved means being worried even having uh, taken to their heart the great responsibility exactly what here our Lord says in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 20 there is none who has taken to his heart to look if you fail to realize the circumstances today of today's apostasy, of today's Christendom, though the Christendom has been begun 2,000 years back, we still find the people not having the real virtue in Christ. We still find the people not able to walk, even like one of the freedom fighter or the father of nation of my country, India. Even Gandhiji, when he was there, he was an absolute man to walk and to tell, you love in truth, and that love alone can make it to win. This is what even his principles were. We do not know whether he was a Christian or what, but we do know a lesson written by Warren Westbury concerning Gandhiji, that he was almost all about to take a baptism and get back into the Christian religion. But this missionary, when he came back, he was being found with some other woman's arm. And that's the reason Gandhiji might have really accused and thrown away Christianity from this country and said, this men, they are not worthy. And this men, they are not worthy to hold the true Lord, but, more, but rather he might have learned the lessons of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The same problem is happening each and every nick and corner. He thought that he can take around the clothes of the British, and I don't want to wear those clothes, I want to wave my own clothes, and he started a march. Really, dear brethren, we, when we look upon our inner man, when we look upon our inner activities of the old sin nature, how much more worthless we could be, not even to be like Christ, not even we are capable of being like Gandhiji, who has been fought in India for the freedom of this country. Really, dear brethren, he went non-violence, and we should know the tolerance what he had. In one of the days, as our Lord directs us, we can look upon some of the lessons about Gandhiji. But the things what I'm telling to my Indian Christians as well, who really value the freedom of this country to enjoy their own religion we need to know first the truth among the midst of such kind of a horrible people who do not even know what sort of a horrible darkness they are possessing in and we are not able to understand that we should be the light the illuminaries of the light and hold forth the word of the light word of the Lord among us and teach them what is it says Philippians 2 15 and 16 and they might have really lost the moral scent which was been there due for England and they might have thought it could be better to give up rather than making them to struggle the reason why England went astray though there have been a great foundation in this country the only reason is people perished without having knowledge in them. They couldn't even once again pull on the cords or stretch out the tent and see that they could establish what it was been there by the will of the Lord to my country, India. The only reason what we can note along or what we can think along is that the rulers might have got out of the teaching of Bible doctrine. <clears throat> but Gandhiji, he stood, he looked, he thought, and he knew 
only to think upon the truth and the love by which we can win. By love, our Lord has won the entire world by redeeming the sins of this people. It is no longer that you work for the redemption of the sins, but you work to walk in the integrity of the truth. When we are belonging to Christ, we need to walk like Christ. But our fellow Indians are not even walking like Gandhiji, far less they can think of any other riots that could be raised through terrorism. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to understand what it is in Christ, what it is the virtue of the love of the Lord. The 17th century was great because when when William Carey came to India, he gave the best gift that he can give to India. And furthermore, 18th century was great. In London, their thinking was been renovated by the knowledge of Bible doctrine. They had a very great sect of men, right starting from William Kelly, ending with J.N. J. Darby. Furthermore, we have great many writers who have written about the magazine of Bible treasury. And when we come to the 19th century, there is no point of anything to be thought upon in London. And maybe when they came along to India, they might have lost their great values and the teaching of the Bible doctrine and the principles that could be fought, the principles that could be absolutely the primary frontiers to rule the minds of the people, and that is nothing but love. When you are in love, you need to know what is the truth in love. But we, the people, do not know the time of the period, the Christians who came to India, they might have not known what is the love, what is the people that they have been perishing. They might have been much more interested in the approbation lust, the power lust, and they might have overruled the Indians. And maybe that is the reason they might have lost the ground. But one good thing that happened to British that happened to India through British was not the thing which we can understand today that is happening around the separation between the Hindus and the Muslims. Wherewith, if the British would have not been stepped on over here, Hindus and Muslims would have been killed each other long back. The only best thing what could happen to India was the establishment of their rule so that there could be a maximum avoidance of fights between the Hindus and as well as the Muslims. Okay, that is a different story in comparison to our thing. But we do have something to be noted. The thing what we need to note is absolutely virtue, virtue, virtue. Virtue derived from the knowledge of Bible doctrine alone. Virtue to be thought of from the Bible doctrine alone. Virtue to be told from the consideration of Bible doctrine alone. And there cannot be and can never be any other thing apart from virtue. Virtue of Christian deeds, virtue of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And that is what, when we need to look upon the people the way they have been absolutely getting spoiled, the grieving, the worrying of our heart should tell to them, really, you all are being in the people without having true light, without having true love. So let us show the light and love for you all, not purchasing their poverty, but rather walking in integrity of truth. Today the same problem has happened to the Christianity trends as well. The religion has lost its trends. Religion are concentrating much upon the things pertaining not to the true repentance of the word of the Lord. And today's Christendom is not a religion. But Christianity is not at all a religion but this man they have turned it out to become a religion and this religion what they have made out is not at all worthy to be thought of because Christianity never qualifies as a religion number one and number two Christianity teaches them to walk in truth and in love where they have utterly totally failed and they have not known the real value, the real worth, the real importance of the power of Bible doctrine that could really shape the history of my country. They would have really made a great source of wealth, which could have been for them harvesting of so many millions and millions and millions of people into Christianity, and which would have been not just like China, one of the Reformation, but the great teaching lessons taught even by William Carey long back in the 17th century. They would have really made a great client nation to God. They would have really made a great work towards Lord God Almighty. They would have really brought along to teach what is this advanced spiritual life. There would have really been so many men faithfully waiting in the gap to fill up, to look and to understand what it could mean. I am proud to be an Indian and above all I am very much proud to be a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with whose knowledge and wisdom we need to reign. And that is what we have permanently given for us and that 
permanence is the indwelling of the spirit, which has seven things. And those seven things, if it has been working properly, there will be a great manifestation of Jehovah's grace to these people, seasoned with salt our words, so that they could look upon our light and come back and walk, a walk that has to be based upon truth and integrity. We know we are dealing with the men who are spiritually dead, but we should know that we are spiritually alive. And spiritually alive person should lead with a man who is absolutely dead, not like a blind leading into the other blind, so that they could both end up in ditch, but a man with the open eyes to look what is their faith and how the best he can feed along in his manner of way and the holy walk of life that could have really changed the heart of Gandhiji to know. But the missionary failed. But we Christians should not fail. We have a doctrine taught for us. Maybe my country is into independence of over 68 years and odd. But we are not over thinking of that. We are thinking of the spiritual independence of each and every believer. The spiritual independence of each and every man. Because when they could God get the freedom by the fought, by the fight of a non-violence walk to walk in the truth and in the love, how much more we should give them their spiritual independence when they could believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we Christians could walk as integrity of the truth. Because as long as you fail to know the integrity of the truth, you cannot walk. And greater your failure to walk a walk that could be absolutely of a great value in this period of the midst of dark and perverse crooked generations of nations, till then you cannot win a soul. Dear brethren, for that, first you need to walk a walk because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has called us to suffer for his sake, to have that holiness to be suffered. And we have to be here for peace, a peace of true understanding which could be bought only from the knowledge of Bible doctrine and the true fellowship with God, our Son. That is what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we need to be in true fellowship with him. But what is happening today, we are not able to understand because we do not know the truth, neither we are understanding about the circumstances of the time. Maybe the controller of the history of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ seemed fit to raise this man so that these people could be delivered. But we could know only one thing, dear brethren, the missionary who failed has yielded us today. What are we doing? If we would have been absolutely worthy to the praise of his glory, we would have been really worthy enough to look what it could be for the Christian virtue inculcated in their soul. Therefore, dear brethren, ultimately what God wants, he does. But it is not we that we need to think, but only one thing what we need to think is, have we walked perfectly before Jehovah? Enoch was told that he was walked. Noah was told he was walked. But Abraham was being told to walk before me and be perfect. And today, Lord God, the Holy Spirit teaches us in the New Testament epistles, walk circumspectly so that we can be the true children of Jehovah. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, let us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.